All right, good morning. Happy Father's Day to everyone. Uh, well, all the, all, well, there we go, all the guys in the room. Uh, happy Father's Day to you. We hope you've had a good day sus, thus far. If not, um, hopefully it'll get better as the day goes along. Hey, just a, just a couple real quick things. Uh, one is, does anybody know why the mushroom was invited to the party? Because he was a fun guy, of course. Come on. It's Father's Day, so you got to have a little bit of dad jokes. Uh, also, do you know why men usually brew the coffee in the house? It's bad. He brews, right? Anybody? All right, there we go. All right, at least I got a courtesy laugh out of one or two people. That's okay. Um, we really are so incredibly glad that each and every one of you are here today. Whether you're joining us online or in person, uh, we welcome you, and we are glad that you are here to be a part of worship this morning here at Parkway Baptist Church. And that's what we want to invite you to do. We want to invite you to be a part of worship today. Um, you know, it's good that we have interaction with each other, and that is something that we enjoy about coming to church. But it's even greater when we have interna inter interaction with our Heavenly Father, because that's the ultimate reason that we come to church. So as we get ready to worship this morning, would you stand and greet somebody? Let them know you're glad they're here this morning. Right here in the front is the Benton mission team that is going to be prayed over right now. Then they're walking out the door because their mission project starts as soon as they get there. How many hours is it, Heather? Three, Three hours drive and they're on the mission field. That's how close they are. So we wanted to pray over them and ask God's blessing on them and all that they're gonna do this week. And then they're gonna go and they're gonna be the arms and the feet and the hands of Christ, loving on people. They're doing construction. They're doing VBS at two different churches and they start from early in the morning and they go to late at night every day this week. And you know, it's gonna be hot and they're out there sacrificing and sweating for the Lord. Can I say that? That's part of our mission experience sometimes, right? So I just ask that if you would to just bow your heads with us. The missions committee is up here surrounding them and I'm gonna lay hands on them and we're gonna pray and ask God to commission them as missionaries wherever they go, that God will be glorified. Whatever they do, whatever they say, God will use it to make a difference in somebody's life this week. God, we come before you, our Father Creator. God, we know the truth and the joy that comes from following you, but God, not everybody knows that. Not everybody has surrendered to that. Not, our, not everyone has experienced the joys that we feel and experience every day doing life as a follower of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as this team goes, that they will be a lighthouse of good news to everyone that they meet and everything that they say will point people towards you. I pray for life change, that people's eternities would be influenced and changed as they surrender and hear to the good news of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for the strength of this team, and I pray for their health, and I pray for traveling graces. I pray for energy for them, that you would sustain them and build them and encourage them. But most of all, Lord, that you would be glorified by them. And we're gonna give you the glory for all the things that happen, God. I pray that you give them words to say. Give them words not to say. Give them a loving heart for everyone that they meet. And I pray, Lord, that you would begin right now, today, to begin divine encounters that you have set up for them and that they'll see you use them in a real and powerful and mighty way for your glory and your glory alone. We commission them today, Father, with your Holy Spirit as they go as ambassadors of Christ and ambassadors of the Parkway family. And we pray this in Jesus' powerful name. 
Amen. Amen. Good luck, Benton team. Good morning, church family. Hope you're ready to worship. We're going to jump right in. Let's sing this together. Sometimes you got to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stand on the giant, worship from the lion's day. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that it's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta wail from the water, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy, yes he Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, breathe in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he in the air's worthy. Yes, he in the air's worthy of all of the praise, give him praise. today. I'm excited to be here uh, and just to join together. And as we turn our hearts in this moment, we could be overwhelmed by so many things, but on a day like Father's Day, I pray that it's nothing but gratitude that is filling our hearts for our Heavenly Father. As we set our sights and our affections on Him, let's just pour it out this morning and give it all to Him. So 
declare this morning. Don't hold anything back. Greatest, your name stands. 
Father God, you are truly holy. You are forever holy, and we long to praise your name forever and ever. Lord, we so look forward to the day when our praise doesn't feel so distant, but when it's face to face with you. Lord, we long for the day that we can come alongside those that have gone before us and praise your name with a chorus of angels and thousands and thousands around your throne. Until then, we just long for your presence here on earth. We long for these opportunities to pour out our praise to you. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thanks for worshiping. You guys can take a seat. And kids, you are dismissed at Children's Church. Father's Day, everybody. Yeah, like dads are like, I don't know if I'm supposed to respond to that or not. Let me try it again. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Happy Father. Because I'm a dad, so you can say it back to me. Thank you. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us today. I want to thank our worship team and how they provide for us every Sunday an opportunity to get into the presence of God, because in the presence of God, healing happens, restoration happens. Forgiveness happens, joy overcomes in the presence of God. And I hope that you have been in that presence today worshiping him and you'll have some more opportunities as we go along. So dads, we celebrate you today. Although you may not feel very celebrated sometimes, if you look at the list of where Father's Day lands on the most celebrated holidays, it's not as high as you might think. Mother's Day, number three, right behind Christmas and Easter. Mother's Day is number three. Father's Day, not number three, not number four. In some list, you're number seven. Other list, you're number 20. 20, like below Arbor Day, I'm not even sure what that is, or you know, Grandfather's Day, which is fine, I get that, the Teacher Day or whatever. Number 20, there's a lot of holidays up there. You are more important than number 20 to us, dads. We celebrate you today because of the, the difference you make in our lives and your family's life. Um, if you're wondering what you should do today to celebrate, if you don't have any plans, I'm gonna tell you, Family Magazine has a list of the top five things you should do with your dad. Uh, see, if you're, see if this made your list. The first thing you're supposed to, you should do with your dad, how about a scavenger hunt for his present? Hide the present and make him go to different places in your house and find the clue, solve the clue to go find his present. Does that sound like fun to you, Dad? That sounds like work to me. I don't want to work on Father's Day, right? I want to just take a nap. I don't want to have to like run all over the house and go outside where it's 100 degrees today. I'm not sure if scavenger hunt makes my list. Heather, if y'all did that, I'll do it and I'll say it was great and I loved it. But you know, maybe not my number one thing. The second thing, how about a head 
down memory lane. Pull out some old pictures of your family. Look at the, ba the kids' baby pictures. Go look at the wedding album, because you know, nothing makes a dad feel better than seeing when we were younger and thinner and had more hair, right? And nothing makes us feel better than to go, what happened to me? I wish I had some clue, could have kept some of that hair back when I wore a medium shirt and all of that, right? That just makes me feel great. Why don't you do that? Or the third thing you could do, and I really like this one, finish your dad's project with him. Dads always have a project going on. Most of them are left undone or unprocessed. We'll call that in process. It might be a long process, but they've got a project. Kids, jump in and do it with your dad. He might really enjoy the company and teaching you something and imparting some wisdom on that. I actually like that one. Number four, Family Magazine said, detail dad's car. Like, it's gonna be 100 degrees anyway, right? Go, go ahead and put on the bathing suit. Get out and get your hose pipe. I'll just go ahead and say I have a hard time saying that because where I'm from in Alabama, it's a water hose, but I know I'm not in Alabama anymore. So get out your hose pipe and go and help dad wash his car. Now, if, you're, if your dad is a car enthusiast, he's probably gonna go, He's gonna watch you do it. He's gonna cringe and then you know what he's gonna do? Here, just let me do it. And now dad is washing his car on Father's Day. Not much of a gift there. That may not should have been in the top five. And the fifth one is give dad a summertime bucket list. Let him write down things he likes to do and let him do one of those today. And next week, let him do the second one. And the next week, the third one. And the next week, the fourth one. So like for four weeks or at least the rest of June, let dad have a bucket list of things that we would do as a family. That sounds great, right? And now the moms are saying, wait a minute, I only got flowers and dinner out. Why does he get five days or, or a whole month and I only get one day of sleep and nap? Maybe, maybe the most popular thing in the room for dads is just to be able to just take a nap on Sunday afternoon, right? That's what moms voted on a couple weeks ago, months ago. I think dads would vote just, let's just take a nap. But however you choose to celebrate Father's Day, know that we love you and we honor you and thank you for all that you do. Dads get a bad rap sometimes that um, people misunderstand what fathers are called to do in their life. Do you know that God has a plan for you and a calling for how you're supposed to lead in your family and in your kid's life? And a lot of times we get it wrong as dads. We think that dads are supposed to be the king of the castle. You've heard that before. Dads are supposed to be on the throne in their household and people are supposed to submit to him and they're supposed to do what dad says. He sets the rules and dad is the king of the castle. He's the boss. And dad feels like if the kids would just listen to me and do what I tell them, then they're gonna turn out okay. Some dads even take their kids' success to mean that they've been a good dad. If your kid is good at sports, then you can, you know, you can kind of like, well, yes, I taught him everything he knows. You know, I remember when he was just a little guy. We were out, you know, you know fielding grounders and, and, you know, we were out there doing the fly balls. And I, I, you know, all that is on me. If he's super smart, you would say, oh, yes, he gets that from me because I taught him everything he knows. And dads take pride in their kids' successes because they think it reflects on them. Listen, dad, you are not called, hear me, you are not called to be the king of the castle. That's the wrong role. If you and I are doing that, we are missing it completely. God has not called us to be the boss and to rule over and to boss everybody else and everybody obey us. That is not our role in our family. And if you and I do that, we're doing it wrong. This is what God has called us to be. Don't think king of the castle. We are called to be the protector of the realm. Not the king on the throne. We're supposed to be the knight that is fighting battles for your family. We are the guy on the wall who's watching and protecting. The knight is the one who puts on the armor. He gets the sword, he gets the shield, and he is going to war to protect those within the castle. You see the difference? Dads, we are not called to boss and lord over and be the king. We are called to be the knight who protects, the knights who serve. Did you know that in the medieval days, the knights were revered because not because of they bossed anybody, it's because they protected everybody. 
They live by a code of conduct called chivalry. And they would do things like if a lady's walking by, they don't even have to know them. They would honor her and they would take off a cloak and let her walk across so she did not get her shoes muddy. They would go out and fight against enemies seen and unseen. And when, they, when a knight walked through town, people went, oh, he's the knight of the castle with reverence and awe, not because he bossed anybody, not because he made a decision of any kind, but because he laid his life down as a sacrifice for all those who are within the realm and all those who are in the castle. That's the role of a father to protect others, to protect your family, to protect your spouse, to protect your house and your kids. And the, and the father who is a knight, he is always on guard. He is always ready to defend. And he, his eyes are on a swivel looking for dangers in the realm that would be assailing against his family. Dads, are you a protector? Or are you a boss? Are you a king? Or are you the knight that is on duty always to protect your family? I wanna show you four things that dads are supposed to be protecting from and for. These are things that God has called you and I to be in this world that is an unfriendly environment against those who would follow Christ and those who would proclaim him and follow him. This world that we live in, it is an unfriendly environment. And so dads, this is what you called you to be the knight that protects the realm. The first thing I want you to see is that you need to protect your heart, your own heart, dad. You are protecting you first because if you're not healthy and you can't be on the wall, how can you protect anybody else? If your heart is polluted and your heart is not right before the Lord, then what can you do? How can you serve? How can you be of influence and protection to anybody else if you yourself have become polluted by the world? If you have your Bibles with me, would you turn it to Deuteronomy chapter six, and we're gonna look at what God says we're protecting our heart from. These are God's commands to those of us who are in service and called to protect. Deuteronomy six, starting with verse 18, this is God's command to those who protects. And first you are to protect your own heart. It says this, do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so that it may go well with you and you can go in and take over the good land that the God has promised on oath to your forefathers, thrusting out all of your enemies before you as the Lord has said. It said, do what is good and right in the Lord's sight not in the sight of others, not what other people think, not what the world wants you to believe, not what the world wants you to do. You do what is right in God's sight. A holiness and righteousness of our hearts that we protect that. We are not gonna be influenced by the world. We are not gonna let the world dictate how we're going to raise our kids and do family, that a dad is a protector, number one, of his own heart. I'm not gonna let anybody influence me. I'm not looking to anybody else's opinion. I'm looking to God. God, am I what you want me to be? Am I the father that you've called me to be? Are you letting yourself be influenced by others or are you standing firm in your convictions and your beliefs to make sure that you are holy and righteous? And look what it says. If you do that, things will go well for you. If you honor God and you are true and you're holy and righteous in his sight, things will go well for you in your marriage, in your family, in your job, in your relationship with Christ. Things will go well if you honor God and protect your own heart. Flip over to chapter seven, verse 25, and he tells us exactly what we're supposed to be keeping our heart from. It says, the image of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver and gold on them and do not take it for yourselves or you will be ensnared by it for it is detestable to the Lord your God. It says, don't take the things of the world and don't covet that. Don't wish that you had more of what they had. Don't wish that your life was different. If only I could be that. If only God would let me do this. It's not a bunch of no's that we're called to. It is a bunch of yeses to God. And he's calling us to do that. He said, don't be influenced. They were taking 
these, these golden images and these silver images and they would strip the, the gold and silver off and they wanted to keep it for themselves. He said, don't do it. What do he say to do with it? Burn it in the fire. It is detestable to the Lord because someone was using that as a distraction to get their attention away from God. He said, don't take that into your heart and into your life. You burn it. Don't let it seep in. Don't covet what other people have. Don't wish that God did other things. You, it is dangerous. It will ensnare you, dads. It will lead you away from God. You cannot be like the world, indulging in worldly things and expect your life to be honoring to God. And you cannot protect your family while you're being led astray with a heart towards the things of the world. To be a knight that protects your family in the realm, you first protect your own heart and make sure that your heart is right with God. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, take note of that, guys, above all else, everything else, guard your heart because everything you do flows from it. Everything you do is influenced by the condition of your heart, how you think, how you lead, how you parent, how you love, how you correct, all of that is influenced by the condition of your heart. Guard your heart first. Guard your heart as if your life depends on it because you know what, it does. Your spiritual life depends on the condition of your heart. Guard your heart as if your family's safety depends upon it because you know what, it does. Because how can you protect them if you can't even protect yourself. Keep yourself pure, guys, so that you can be a blessing to your family. Not only are we called to protect ourselves and our own heart, but the second thing I want you to see is God's called us to protect our home. He wants us to be a blessing and a protector to our house. Like the sentry on the wall, we are watching for danger to keep out the world that's going to come and, and, and cause harm to our kids and to their hearts. We're still in chapter seven, look at verse 26. It says this, dads, do not bring a detestable thing into your house or like it, you will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it for it is set apart for destruction. It says, dads, do not bring any detestable thing into your home. Do not make place for it in your house. If you see it, you be the knight that roots it out and says, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna say that. We're not gonna make a place for that in our lives. We are not going to do that. Cause you know why? Because the guard is the one who's the blame. If you're standing on the wall and, you're, and just your job to protect and to watch the city at night and some, and some robbers or enemy soldiers, if they climb over the wall and you don't see them, whose fault is it? It's the guard's fault. He was on the post. He was on the job. He was supposed to be watching and guarding and protecting and he didn't do his job. If the enemy climbs the wall, opens the gate and the whole enemy army comes flooding into the castle, whose fault is it? It's the guard who was supposed to be watching and guarding. Dads, be on the wall and do not let any detestable thing come into your home, not just your life, but into your family. Don't let people come into your home that are gonna be destructive and they're gonna lead you away from the Lord. Don't let, don't let division come between you and your wife, right? You protect that relationship and you say, this is the first priority of my heart is my wife and then my kids are second and I'm gonna protect my home because this is where God is supposed to be glorified. When I was growing up, uh, we had a television that sat across the room and this was before remote controls. So we didn't have a remote control. I know I'm dating myself right here. So I was the remote control. I was the youngest. So it was Matt, get up and turn the channel. So I went up and stood beside the TV and my dad would say next and I literally turned the channel. Next, turn the channel. Next, turn the channel. Wait, go back, go back, uh, go back, go back, go back. Fortunately, there was only like three channels, so it didn't take that long. It wasn't a hard job, but it was my job to be the remote control. My parents, I remember when we went from three channels and then we got a movie channel. My parents bought a subscription to HBO and there were some things that would come on HBO that I would go, whoa, wait. I didn't know we could see that because we had NBC and 
ABC and CBS, and then we had HBO nighttime. And I was like, whoa, that's probably not good. And we had to put boundaries on what we let come into our home that we should be allowed to see or not see. And I needed a dad to say, don't do that, son. That is not healthy for you. Don't watch that, son, because that, that's a boundary for your heart. Dads, we need to be setting up boundaries and not let anything come into our hearts and into our lives and into our family. And we need to speak truth to that and say, that is not healthy. Nowadays, our kids are not watching the television. They're on their phone all the time. And as they look at the phone, it is speaking to their heart and to their life. Our kids, are the, they, they are completely accessible to people all over the world. And some of those people are good and some of them are not. And they have access to speak truth or lies into the, into the eyes and the hearts of our kids. And they can be told you don't measure up or you should be this or you should be that. And they're influenced to say, I'm not good enough and their self-esteem suffers, why? Because they're listening to somebody who's communicating to them on a phone. Dads, we need to be careful about who we let people have access to our kids. I'm not saying they don't get a phone, y'all relax. I'm just not what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is you need to speak truth to your kids and put some boundaries on that so that you can limit and you don't let any detestable thing come into your family because it's not healthy. And if you do that, it is detestable before the Lord and you will be held responsible. Dads, you hear that? That's a hard word to hear. But if you allow that into your home and if you allow that influence over your kids, you will be held responsible as the guard who stands on the wall as the protector of your kids, you cannot turn a blind eye to what's going on and just say, they'll figure it out because I did. I figured it out and I turned out okay and I think they will too. You need to be aware and cautious about who you're giving access to your kids' hearts and minds to because that is your job as a protector of the realm that we are supposed to be watching and we're supposed to be uh, helping, and we're supposed to be setting boundaries against them. Dad, set boundaries for what, you're, what people watch in your home. Don't bring pornography into your house. Don't bring it into your heart. Don't let it, ha has no place in your house. You know why? Because that will erode your heart and that will erode your marriage. And how can you protect your family when your family is split? You let your heart be influenced. It it deteriorates your marriage and then that turns into divorce and then your family is split and now how can you protect your family and your, and your kids? Be very careful what you allow into the influences of the world that's coming into your house. You are not the king of the castle telling people don't do it. You are the knight who says, we're not gonna do this. This is not healthy. And you are actively fighting for the heart of your kids. The third thing I want you to see that dads are supposed to be protecting, protect your kids. It is hard to grow up as a kid today. I am so glad that I am above that. I'm sorry that my kids are in the middle of it. They're in college, so they're on the, on the top end of it. But there are difficult choices to make in a hostile environment against followers of Christ. And we need to be protecting the heart of our kids because they're hearing a whole lot of negative things. They're hearing a lot of things from the world that you don't count and you don't matter and you don't measure up. But a dad who is protecting has such a positive influence on their kids because they can speak against those lies and they can speak truth to the heart of their kids. Let me give you an example. If it is raining outside and your family wants to go and play, a lot of times people say, well, it's raining, we can't go and do that, right? I've always laughed at that because I've never been afraid to go out and just get wet. Just go out and just, you know what? We swim and we get wet. We take a bath every day, I hope. And so we get wet. So what's the harm of just going out there and just getting wet? Lightning is another issue, but if it's just raining, why don't you just go? But a lot of times people will say, we can't go out in the rain unless we have an umbrella. Because in the umbrella, now you have protection from the rain. 
And now you can walk down the street and not get wet, or at least not much. You can go out to the park and you can play. You can go wherever you wanna go. If you're under the protection of the umbrella, then it doesn't matter what the environment is, is that you can still go out and do life as normal. You, are you following me? Our kids, that we want our kids to go out into our society and go and function in this world. But the world is a very hostile environment. And so we say, don't go out and do that because you'll be in danger and all, all the influences and all the negative things. But if our kids had the protection of a father that was watching over them and protecting them, then they could still go out into the world and function normally. They don't have to hide at all because dad is watching and dad is protecting and they don't have to stop doing anything. Go live life and be a Christian and be a Christ follower. You have nothing to fear. Why? Because dad's on the job and dad is protecting and dad is speaking truth to their kids. There are things that dads can say that will be a protection to their kids' hearts. There are things that dads can do that can counteract the influences of the world. Here's, a, here's some things that dads should be saying to their kids on a regular basis. The first one is dads should be saying, I love you. Don't assume that they know, tell them anyway, and tell them often, so much so that they go, oh, dad, I know, that's fine, tell them again because the world tells them that no one loves them and the world tells them that they are not lovable, you need dads to speak truth to their heart and say, I love you just the way you are. Not if you make an A, I love you just the way you are. Not if you hit a home run, I love you just the way you are. You are valuable to me as God's gift to me. Dads, do you tell your kids, I love you and do you say it enough. Here's another thing that dads can say to their kids. I believe in you. I know what you're going through. And I just want you to know that I believe that you can do it. It's a struggle right now. I get it. And I know it's hard for you, but I believe in you. I see something special in you. That's what you say when you say, I believe in you. There's something special inside of you that matters and you're going to do it. And I believe in you and I'm not gonna do it for you as a dad, I'm gonna let you do it, but I believe that you can do it. What's the, the next thing that you could say? I am proud of you for all that you are and for all that you have become and all that, I am proud of what you're doing. I'm proud of your character. I'm proud of your thoughts. That's important for a kid to hear from a parent to say, the world says I'm not enough, but my dad says he's proud of me. So maybe I am enough. And maybe I am valuable and maybe I am okay because why would my dad be proud if I wasn't? And when you say you're proud, it speaks deep to the heart of their soul and it makes a huge difference. Here's something else you can say to your kids. You can say, you can do it. This is what they're trying to do. I believe in you and I know that you can do whatever you put your mind to. I believe that and I know that you can do it. This last one is, is this everything's gonna be okay. Sometimes your kids just need to know that you recognize that you're, in a, that you're in a struggle and a dad needs to say, you know what, it's gonna be okay. They expect mom to say it because mom is the encourager most of the time, but for dad to come along and say, as a protector of this house and my calling and my job, I'm telling you that we're okay. You're okay, you're on a good path and everything is gonna be okay. These are things that parents dads should be saying to their kids. How are you doing, dad? Are you speaking truth to your kids? Are you contradicting the lies? How often are you doing it? Are you doing it in private? Are you doing it in public? Are you loving and praising your kids? It's your job, dad. You can't just say, oh, they know, they know. They know how I feel. Mm -mm. That's not your calling. Your calling is to speak into their heart and say it and show it and live it. Have you done that, dads? Are you actively speaking truth into the lives of your kids? Would you be willing to do it in front of somebody else? Would you be willing to do it in front of a room full of people? My son's in the room and my daughter would have been, but she's down in the nursery. I hope she watches this later. 
but let me take this moment. Parker, Maddie, I love you guys. Just the way you are. God created you so special in every single way. And I'm so honored that he let you be a part of my family and our family. You are a blessing to me and to your mom. And I love you. I'm proud of you in all that you're doing and everything that you're becoming. It's amazing. And I am so proud of the person that you are and the heart that you have. And I'm proud of what God's gonna do for you. And I believe that you're gonna be great. Whatever you choose to do, you are gonna be incredible and you're gonna be great. And I know that you can do all things, not just because of your ability, but because God's got a great plan for you. And my hope and prayer is that you will allow him to lead you wherever it is and it's gonna be great. And I'm gonna be cheering you on, both of you. I'm gonna be cheering you on, watching God do incredible things through you. Love you, proud of you. And I'm so excited to see what God does in your life. Thank you for letting me do that for just a minute. Do the same, dads. Go to your kids today and tell them how you feel. And just be honest and from your heart and just love on them. That is how you protect your kids in this world today. The fourth thing I want you to see that as a father, that we are called to protect our kids' faith. Protect their faith. Don't just protect them, but we should be actively protecting our fathers, our kids' faith and pointing them not to us, but pointing them back to God and showing them that there is a God who loves them and that a God that matters. Back in Deuteronomy 6, we're looking at verse 20. Notice what it says. It says, in the future, when your son asks of you, what's the meaning of these stipulations, these decrees and the laws of the Lord that God has commanded you? This is what you tell your son. Dads, this is what you tell your daughters. The first thing you tell them is of what God has done for you. Talk about God's goodness to them. It says, we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders, great and terrible upon Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us a land that he promised on oath to our forefathers. He is bragging on God. This is what God did for us, son, daughter. This is what he did. He has done all these things for our lives and we're giving God the credit and God the glory. We don't take the credit. We don't take the glory. Dads, point your kids to God and his goodness and tell them all the good things he has done for you. Man, there was a time when we were just dirt poor and we didn't think we could make it, but you know what? God was faithful and he did these things for us. I just want you to know. And they're like, oh, we had no idea because they weren't even born yet or they were two. And you tell them of God's goodness in your life and how he has provided for you and your faith in God will be an influence to them. Not only do you tell them the goodness of God, but then you tell them what God wants of them. This is what God requires of us. Verse 24, the Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees to fear the Lord our God, so we may always prosper and be kept alive as in the case today. You tell them God is requiring us to obey his laws and decrees. That's why we're a Christian family. And that's why we have boundaries. And I know it's not fun and you can't do what everybody else does, but it's okay because we're honoring God because that's what he asks of us. You tell them, this is why we do what we do. This is why we are who we are. And lastly, he says to talk about God's faithfulness and righteousness. Verse 25, if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. In the Old Testament, your righteousness came from obedience to the law and sacrifice. But for you and I today, the righteousness comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Point your kids to Jesus and say, the righteousness of God is for you, but it is not in me or your mom. It is in Jesus and Jesus alone because he died on the cross for your sins. He paid the penalty so you could be reconnected to the father. Dads, how do you protect your kid's faith? You point them to Jesus over and over. Take them to church. Don't send them to church. You take them. Teach them to pray. Don't just tell them to pray. Teach them to pray. You model for them what God is calling them to be and you will be able to be a protector of their faith. 
a protector of your kids, a protector of your home, and even a protector of your own heart. That is God's calling to you and I as fathers today. You have another opportunity, dads, to lead out, not just on Sundays, but on every Sunday, but especially on next Sunday. Because next Sunday, we are, we are going into our renovation plan. Our all-in giving campaign begins next Sunday. An opportunity for dads to have conversations to say, this is important for our family. I think we need to be a part of this. Or this is an opportunity for us as a family to honor God and to sacrifice. This is how it's going to go next week when you come back. And I hope that you are already beginning to pray about what God is asking you to give. Our goal is $1 million. We're going to renovate every part of our church. Not the whole church, but every building gets some renovation to it. And it's got an amazing transformation that is going to get us ready for the next 20-something years here. And we're excited about that. And we see God preparing our hearts. And I hope that you are even now beginning to pray about what God would have you to give. As you leave today, there are cards that look like this in the foyer, and we'll put it on the screen for you so you can see it a little bit. This is a, a giving card, and next week there will be in envelopes. And so we want you to pray about how you will commit to give to the renovation plan over the next 30 months, two and a half years, as, a, as we're committing to raise a million dollars. This is giving above and beyond our regular tithes and offerings. I'll make that really clear, that we are still giving what we normally give to the Lord so that we can do the ministries that we do, our $1.2 million budget. That's what it takes to do our programs and our ministry here. This is giving above and beyond that. And we're gonna do it in two ways. The first one is a first fruits offering. That is what, that is, this is what we can do today. This is how much we can give right now. And we would love to be as much as we could do and even raise half of it if we could up front to say, and you write that on the card in the red part, this is my first fruits offering today. The first of what I'm giving is right here, this amount. And you put that amount in the envelope that the card will be in. Whether it's a check, it could be cash, it could be other means. You could write on it first fruits and it's gonna be this and say, I'm gonna do it electronically. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do PayPal or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a direct withdrawal from my checking account. You can write that down. That, that's how it's gonna to come to the church. You can do other things besides cash and check. You can actually transfer stocks to the church and, you know, and the church could, could sell it and you would pay no, no taxes on the appreciation and things like that. There's the state planning. And if you have any questions about any of that, call the church office, talk to our financial secretary Becky Smith she will explain all of that but there will be an altar here and there'll be a challenge for us to bring our first fruits offering to the altar and to give a sacrifice to God and say this is what God has asked me to do below that is a there's a there's a box that's grayed in and this is for people who want to pledge I will give this much per week over the next 30 months I will give it per month or I will give it uh, each year. I will give a certain amount. You can write in whatever you want and you can change the timeline and you can change that, but you would write down, this is what I pledge to give. Then there's a total amount for that pledge part in that box. And then you sign it as your commitment to the Lord. Not to me, not to Parkway. This is my gift, my sacrifice to the Lord. An opportunity for us to join in what God is doing. What I'm asking our church to do, and we have been asking for the last four weeks, is just pray and ask God, what do you want me to give? And then just listen. And you may be surprised and you may be challenged. Husband and wives, you need to have conversations this week and you need to be prayerfully considering and talking about what is God asking us to do and how do we want to respond. On Wednesday night, we, we had a Bible study about the rich young ruler and at the very end of the story, he had an opportunity that Jesus asked him to give of his wealth. And he had an opportunity to do that. And the story says that he walked away sad, unable to give, unwilling to participate in what Jesus was asking him. Wonder what would have happened if he had agreed to give what God was asking him. He would not have walked away sad. He would have walked away rejoicing. He would have been excited about his faithfulness and about what God was going to do with that. We have an opportunity, church, next week to, to walk away sad 
because we said no to God or, or to be all in for what he's asking us to do and to be rejoicing and celebrating because we were faithful and we as a church were faithful to do whatever. I don't have a set number in mind for anybody, but God does. Just pray and ask God that simple question. What do you want me to give? And then just listen for his answer and we will rejoice and glorify God in this place next week. It will be exciting, I promise, as we celebrate obedience to him and we see what God is going to do in our future. Dads, you have an opportunity this week to be the dad that God has called you to be. Are you trying to be the king of the castle or are you ready to be the knight, the protector of the realm? Dads, we're gonna pray for you in these next few minutes. We're gonna celebrate you, but we're gonna pray for your strength and your heart and your ability to discern what is truth and what is not as you lead out in your family. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Right now, I just ask that you would pray for our dads. Pray for your dad. Pray for our dads in the room. Pray for dads that are watching this on a broadcast, either live or later, and just pray for them that they would be the leaders that God's called them to be. Right now, as you're praying, just pray that God would give them the strength to stand strong. And right now, just give them the wisdom to know what to say to their kids and over their kids. And that God would use them as a protection to the heart of their kids in an unfriendly world. And now think of our heavenly father the Lord God who created us all. And he is doing those very things for us. He is loving on us. He is speaking truth into our hearts. Have you heard him say that to you today? That that the God in heaven that created you is whispering to your heart right now, I love you. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. You can do it. He's whispering to your heart right now, everything is going to be okay because he is on the wall and he is protecting and he's honoring you. He's covering you. He is ready to go to war for you because he loves you that much. Can you feel the love of the Father pouring down on you today? God, in these moments, I pray, Lord, that we would feel your presence and we would know and understand what it means to be a child of God, protected by the Father, not not the king of the universe, but the knight and the savior who died for us so that we could be set free and forgiven so that we would have a hope and a future. God, thank you for the sacrifice of Christ on the cross to give us a second chance so that we could be reconnected to our God and our heavenly Father. In these moments, God, we celebrate you today. God, that you would reign supreme. God, I just pray, Lord, that we would glorify you and you alone for all that you've done and all that you are. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna ask you to stand where you are. And as we sing and worship, this altar is open for dads who want to come pray that they'll be the dads they're called to be. There'll be a staff down here that would love to pray with you about whatever is on your heart today. And most of all, let's glorify our God in heaven, our heavenly father who rains down his love on us. Let's worship together. As we move into this time of prayer and worship, I just want to read the scripture over you this morning. It says in Revelation 5, And I looked around and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and also the living creatures and the elders, and their number was countless thousands, plus thousands of thousands. And they said with a loud voice, The Lamb who was slaughtered is worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, 
under the earth, on the sea, and everything within them say, blessing and honor and glory and dominion to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. said at the beginning, I hope you are grateful today and I hope you leave here full of gratitude. No matter what you're going to do this afternoon, what your plans may be, that you are grateful for all the blessings that God has given you and your family. 
And as we look forward to renovation, we look forward to a pledge Sunday next week. Brother Matt already said it, the cards are in the lobby. If you've not gotten one yet, please get one on your way out. I hope you've been praying. I hope you pray even more this week as we look forward, as we move forward with a grateful heart for what God is gonna do here at Parkway in the future. And it's already started. Some of you have seen the, the, the mess that has been made already. More mess is to come, but there is beauty in the end. And God is taking us to great places. I hope you have a great time with your family today. Have a wonderful afternoon.